Glad Rap Channel here with Chris Martin, uh, boxing trainer. Um, you know, David Tua's former trainer, Parker's former trainer. So you've been some of, uh, around some of New Zealand's best uh, amateurs as well as pros. You know, we did a, 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 a pre-fight analysis of the fight before. Uh, you know, it did very well on, on, on the internet. I didn't think I was surprised. Yeah, me too, yeah. So um, uh, we should have done a, a, a post-fight analysis sooner, a little sooner, but apologies for that. But thank you for coming. Welcome, good to be here. Thank yeah. you for me. So, um, the fight, Parker Josh. So, you know, Parker lost his WBO heavyweight crown against the unbeaten Anthony Joshua. He, uh, he did well, you know, put up a gallant effort against, he took him the distance for the first time in his career. Um, the scorecards were wide, though, uh, in Joshua's favor. So, 119, 109, and then 118 uh, to 110 twice. And, um, uh, do you, you agree with with the scorecards? Nothing controversial here. I don't think it's anything really controversial. Three rounds, three. Some some said four, three or four. You know, I, I don't really think the judge was too far out. Okay. Uh, you know, like you said, Eddie Hearns, what gave him two maximum? Yeah, two. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I I think you know three. See the thing the thing is you know the criteria for for scoring professional boxing you got boxes to tick. Mm -hmm. You got a uh, um, you know you got significant punches landed. You got effective aggression. Uh, ring generalship, mm -hmm. uh, defense, mm -hmm. um, and and a lot of the fight. It's very hard when you go to another man, especially a guy with his profile and status. You go to his hometown, and he's got three belts. He's a unified champ, and and you got to really take it off him. You know, you got to really, really go work hard to take it off him. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just uh, one of those things. It's kind of hard when when you're on the back foot, like Joseph. Joe spent a lot of time on the back foot, didn't mm -hmm. he? Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yep. Moving in that, but he did make it difficult. He spoiled it. He made it difficult for Anthony to get set. Um, but uh, the judging, I think, when Joe had moments, then you see Anthony consistently him coming forward again, working on his jab and kind of controlling it a little bit. So I don't really have a problem. But as you said, I mean, Joe, Joe put up a good effort. Uh, do you think, in a way, it was sort of underwhelming to the public? Like in a way, you know, the hype leading up to the fight, it, it seemed like there was going to be a war. Like you know, Parker was sort of indicating that. He's going to get aggressive. He's going to make the shots hurt. Yeah. And I don't know. Do you think it left a bit of a sour taste? Yeah. But some some were disappointed. I mean, yeah. you know, as I mentioned, there's, there's a, that old proverb where we overpromise and underdeliver. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a bit of a case of that. People were expecting, like you said, it was just going to be laid on the line. We're yeah. going to be a war, and, and and they were going to really uh, just just leave it all in the ring. Um, I mean, I, you know, you got to say that Tim Parker did, did a very good job in getting that contract signed and getting Anthony in the ring. Mm -hmm. I mean, so they used the tactics they used, controversial as they were, they got it. When the contract was signed, then it's probably time to ease off that, get in the gym and get training. Yeah. But, you know, every second day there was something coming out, something controversial, uh, you know, about Anthony and his chin. They continue that sort of... Uh, story going and this and that. There was Joseph's too fast. He's going to knock him. You know, it was constant. It was every second day. I mean, mm -hmm. they bombarded the media. Um, I think the fight was going to sell itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? I agree. Yeah. And that you hear from the Joshua camp is nothing. You yeah. know, it was just very quiet. They just got about the business and trained and did what they got to do. He didn't make any promises other than Anthony said he's going to win. Because that fight was sort of looming for like three years, so people were wanted to see it no matter what, right? Trash talking or not, people wanted to see those two. Absolutely. Yeah. In a, in a way, Parker was like the chosen one that, that, that we thought was going to dethrone AJ. I mean, did you see it that way? Well, I think most, most experts, yeah. they, they, they had AJ taking the win mm -hmm. and they had Joseph, Joseph giving him a, a good nudge. Run for his money. Yeah. 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 And it's kind of <laughs> happened, but in regards to like you said, so what we heard, we were expecting some real uh, fireworks. Mm -hmm. We were kind of expecting a war, but it just, that didn't eventuate. Um, but you know that's that's boxing styles make fights and sometimes things don't always you know live up to expectations. But hype hype in boxing is one of those things that it, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. You know, it can, after the fight you got to live with it. You got to live with the hype. Everything that you said and everything you were using to to either try and get under the opposition's skin or whatever it may be, whether it's in factual or whether it's just you know bullshit, whatever. Mm -hmm. You got to live with it after the fight, and that's that's kind of what happened. Yeah. So but people were disappointed at home. They were expecting a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so according to the pun stats, so the Englishman managed to outland him during the fight. So largely, you know, thanks to his six reach 
um, uh, reach advantage. Um, so the jab proved to be Joshua's weapon of choice on the night as he used it to keep Parker at arm's length mm. and it prevented him from getting work on the inside and attacking the body. So uh, w would you agree with that? Yeah, I think it was. I mean, as we know, before, during, and even after the fight in the press conference, um, Kim Barry was saying that Joseph needs that double jab. He's got to use that double jab. He didn't use it enough. The thing is, you did need you need you needed more than that as a go-to to close the distance mm -hmm. and open up, open up. The, but the smaller fighter has got to have various options how to open up the bigger man. And what Anthony Joshua had, he had a very well-educated jab. The thing that actually surprised me is. It was how quick he was. Uh, <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of difference in the speed, mm -hmm. but he kind of negated he negated that that movement Joseph was trying to get off by punching with him. Mm -hmm. And the guy with the longer reach is, is, is going to come out on top of that. He was he was just landing long and, and kind of upsetting the rhythm. And Joseph tried a few times to enter that way, but Anthony kind of negated it a bit with his by his own jab. He lived, Anthony lived behind him. So, so what what was Parker supposed to do against a guy with with a six reach mod? Like, what would you have advised him to do differently? You know. Well, see, you didn't know what he was going to do. In the fight, I, I have to say, Anthony took a lot of half steps and moved off and made Joseph miss a lot. He was reading it. You notice that every time Joseph was coming, Anthony was just taking half steps and steps and moving, making Joseph miss and get in position. So Joseph couldn't struggle. He struggled to find his distance. He really couldn't find his range, if you notice that. He missed a lot of shots there. Yeah, yeah. It was swinging. Yeah, yeah he was having yeah. a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he just, he, he just couldn't. He wasn't finding the mark with that jab. The jab was always short. If you noticed it, yeah, yeah. But occasionally, occasionally he would he, he would he would enter. He might land a couple. He might significant shots landed. There wasn't a whole heap, but Joe did enter sometimes and, and make Anthony have to you know have to find some, find some space. Yeah, because because uh, yeah, because according to the the, the compu stacks, um, they said that Parker threw a lot, yeah, but a lot. didn't land. Yeah, no, he outworked. He yeah, was so his accuracy was off. Yeah. yeah, it's just his accuracy was off. Yeah, and and uh, Anthony landed a significant shots. Um, so, so you know, um, like, why did it, why did, why did, why do you think he was so calculated, like AJ? Like, why doesn't he just come out there and do the demolition job that he almost does, get him out of there, a couple of rounds? Why do you think, I mean, do you think this was because, I mean, part of the game plan that Higgins sort of, you know, the taunts of the glass jaw, you know, showing the videos of him getting knocked down. Do you think in a way, sort of, David Higgins maybe got in his head and just sort of made him reluctant to... To engage, possibly, possibly all that, and, and possibly Anthony too has been uh, he's been labelled as a you know a knockout king. Yeah, he likes to come in, he likes to go hard, and he and he puts himself at risk doing it. Maybe this time he, he just thought he'd, he'd be calculating and, and keep it long and box. Maybe they they um, that rattled him and got under his skin a little bit, so it made him a little bit uh, more defensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, but all those, but when the bell goes, I guess who who knows what's going through a fighter's head. Yeah, so in a way, are we, are we seeing like the evolution of Anthony Joshua? Like we're still seeing this guy, you know, turn from this explosive mm -hmm. fighter and mm -hmm. now sort of being like after the Vladimir Klitschko fight, after the Carlos Takam fight, you know, with the headbutt, maybe yes, he's, yes. he's thinking of weighing, think, weighing the options? I think he, he's a work in progress, as in every fighter's a work in progress mm -hmm. uh, to go de develop. And Anthony, you can still see he, he's developing. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, every fight, you see some little things in each fight where he's, okay, he's... he's He's added, he's added that on there. That's, that looks quite good. Well, you know, and as you said, from the Klitschko and the Tekken fight, uh, different fights. Every time you're in the ring, you do a lot of learning and you take things away. Mm -hmm. And then you get in the gym and you start working on things to make make some adjustments here and there and additions. And I think that's what's happened from those. Because throughout his career, Joshua's used to having guys that'll engage with him and they'll mm. come at him. Yeah. And he's always obliging. Uh, Joe kind of spoiled it a little bit, which is which is still that's quite clever. He, but off the back foot, he was he was just couldn't really Anthony couldn't really dial him in as easy as he could. He wasn't there to find. Yeah. yeah. Um, but once again, it was just Joe was on the back foot most of the fight, and it's very hard, hard very hard to win um, when the bigger man's coming forward and kind of controlling the ring and so forth. And and Anthony was landing the bigger shots. He started to get the to get the range sometimes, and Anthony was well, when he landed, they were quite you know he had the, the better moments, you know, and being a bit busier on it. Do you think he frustrated Joe as well? Like after a point, he was. I think the, I think they frustrated each other a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I think so. I, th I think Joe Joe was a spoiler in it, and, and that's that's a good thing. Yeah. But then it was just he needed execution with the offense, and when the when the, the smaller man just has to get in, has to get in and try and, and hold hold that position when he's in. The referee didn't help. 
But I think that cancelled out both men because Anthony Joshua works very well on the side too. He's dangerous on the mm -hmm. side and strong. And those uppercuts of his, we know the damage that they yeah. do. So I think the referee shut that down and probably in some sense both men, um, <coughs> well, not suffered, but both men were, were hindered by that, you know, because they both like to get into it. And so either or kind of negated it, but both men were hindered by that as well. So. Yeah, because whenever, you know, when Parker got close, like the referee was sort of always um, breaking up the fighters and disrupting the, the flow of the fight. Mm, absolutely. Um, and, you know, so Anthony Joshua with, with the six inch reach advantage, he was sort of able to tag Paco on the outside. Yes. And whenever they got close, he would sort of come in there and he sort of had a very strict control on the close quarter fighting. Yeah, there's even areas there when they should have been just let to fight out of their pocket and, and he was, the referee's coming in and stopping it. You see, Anthony was trying to line up those uppercuts as well and they yeah, were dangerous yeah. and Joe was getting, he was getting the roll on, he was going to the body as well, but the referee, so I think both were hindered by that. Uh, it was it was left to that they had to they had to box along. <laughs> yeah, because 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 uh, so so some people thinking that you know Parker's main the way he could cause an upset is to get in close and rough him up, you know, um, and then sort of the referee sort of tainted that, you know, just sort mm. of nullified his his only chance of sort of winning that because because he didn't have the reach advantage. No, I didn't know. So do you think the ref nullified like his, or do you think the outcome would have been different if he had a different ref? I mean, or do you think it would have been the same outcome regardless? Like AJ uh, was it, just... It would have been a little more interesting because um, Anthony works very well on there too, as you know. Exactly. He's with strong. Upper, yeah, yeah. He's strong. He's yeah. dangerous in the pocket. He hits, he's hitting a lot of guys. He's almost decapitated like, you know, yeah, Vladimir, yes. right? <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. That right uppercut of his is a dangerous punch. Mm. And he was trying, he was looking for it. But yeah, it's it's you know it's one of those things. Um, as I said, I think I think I think they were both nullified on what they'd like to do in there. It was stopped, so then they had to they'd get back in box. They had to get, sort of get long. But the fight before it, um, the think, David Price. I think Alexander Pavikin. He, he I mean he got hurt too. Price hurt him. Yeah, but I, yeah. Pavikin was just he he had those other other options and had to open up the tall guy and get in. Yeah. Uh, Price wasn't moving and and working quite as much as you know as Joseph was. But there are just some other options there too. How do you open a man up that's, that's bigger and taller? You have to, you've got to chance it. You've got to get in. Dillian White said the same thing. He just said Joe didn't take enough chances. Yeah. So so do you think he needs to like, you know, work on his hand speed, you know, this footwork? He needs to learn how to control the center of the ring? Do you think it's it's a lot of improvement? Oh, yeah, there's, oh look, it's a learning curve for Joseph as well. Uh, and he didn't disgrace himself. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, but he was, he was. He lost fair and square. Yeah. As simple know. as that. The bigger man was just better on the day. Um, yeah, of course, there's, there's room for improvement. There's, there's ways to... Because um, he's not going to... Anthony George is not going to be the first six foot six boxer Joe's going to be up against. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they had, they had some good... They had some big men in the camp. I think they had Tony, Tony Yoka. Yeah, they had Malik Scott. Yeah, they well. had Malik Scott. Yeah. So they had some big rangy guys in camp. So um, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not sure what happened there with the, with the sparring being able to... Close, close the gap and get in. But I know Malik Scott and, and Tony Yoko are both back foot fighters. Yeah, yeah. That's how they like to move. So I'm not, I don't know what happened to camp there, you know, but uh, at the end of the day, it was, you know, Joe just did struggle to get in there and hold hold his ground and work. I mean, he really struggled. And Anthony had to say, would move off nicely too. He would read it. He was just taking half steps and making Joe miss. So it was, it was just one of those things, I think, that Styles on the night, Anthony didn't come out as he usually would. He was quite conservative. He just seemed to work, live behind the jab all night, and do what he needed to do to win. Didn't take too much of a risk either. Mm -hmm. Wanted to have a go a few times, but um, and then Joe wouldn't gate. He was gone, which made him, made him, you know, Anthony had to reset again and try yeah. and cut off the ring. I thought he did a great job in, in cutting off the ring. Mm. Um, <clears throat> like you know, he, um, he 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 cornered him well, but then you know he had this quote, you know, the right hand will take you around the block, but the jab will take you around the world. Like so, he he sort of kept the le the right hand cocked for most of the fight. Like he didn't want to. Um, I I think he was just pro pro probably just aware of uh, of you know Parker's power and and didn't want to take any chances. No, I think he just he just yeah. got got to a situation. He realised that okay, I'm in control. I'm in control here. I'll keep I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Actually, I might box. Yeah. I might keep it long. I might just really work off that jab. Yeah. I, I, you know you know how it happens. The corner were telling him to. They're getting tidbits from the corner. They, they, they were big on the on the keeping it long and working. Yeah, it was it was just one of those things. How do you rate Parker's defense? Like, I mean, maybe that's it's it's a bit underrated. But what do you think of his defense? Because he didn't look. I mean, he didn't have any. He didn't look like Cotto after a Pacquiao fight. He no, didn't have no. any broken orbit of bones. I mean, even even after most of his fights, he always looks clean. 
is is he is this something we're overlooking? Does he just have a have a great awkward defense? Or? I think um, well, he, he did he did get tagged. I think um, Joe's jo at to this point. I think Joe's deep defense was his offense because he was Joe was quick. Uh, he was quicker than most of his opponents, okay. and he would he would let he would let shots go, and, and that can actually not you know nullify a person's offense. Yeah, yeah. But the person that can, um, as you can see, the person that's got that can that can counter and and, and uh, look for counters, you know, slip and counter and move and, and work off that. That's that's when Joe would get a hard time, you know. Like he, even Tyson Fury was walking on the Joe to a, on a lot of shots if you if you remember. Mm -hmm. Tyson's walking back, bang, here it was, bang over the top. You and Fury, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, and Fury, sorry, not Tyson, Fury, yeah. So that yeah, I think um, I think you could do with some more defensive patterns, absolutely, mm -hmm. and that's footwork in that as well. Um, and even even being able to use his because he when you're in a guy with a, who's a right hand specialist like Anthony, oh, I was I was concerned with Joe with that low left hand. Yeah, I was yeah. concerned for it. You know what I mean? It yeah. was, and he was drifting into into Anthony's right hand as well. But like you said, Anthony was quite conservative uh, that night. But Joe was moving right into it, and that, that left hand was down. I'm like, oh, gee, this is. This isn't good. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a time when you're out long. That I, I got in my like with different fighters. I said there's a there's a there's a long a long stance. There's an inside stance. There's there's an inside. There's different there's different kinds of uh, defensive patterns. Even if you use with your guard, there's different things you can do to, to you know help you you depending where your range is and what you're doing. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, th I think um. Yeah, it's all there. Always fighters need to adapt and, and, and learn. And um, in the fight, actually, I've, I've seen Anthony Joshua's defense get better and better in the fights. Yeah. He was weaving, rolling, catching. He was quite comfortable. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Quite left hand high catching those overhands. He was he was quite comfortable. I think I only saw one single right hand get over the top. Yeah, the he, he, he kind of predicted when, when Parker was going to kickstart mm. that engine, you know? Well, yeah, yeah, and he used yeah. to back away from yeah. it. Yeah, he could read it. He could read it quite. Yeah. That's all his experience. You know, he did a lot of fights. So how good does this? How good is Anthony Joshua if he went against you know a top boxer like Joseph Parker, and maybe Parker won two three rounds? How good does this? Like how, like is this something pretty incredible? Is this a, an incredible uh, fighter that we're talking about? I think I think potentially he he can be because he's only young too. Yeah. Well, heavyweight's only 20, 28. 28, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's only young. Yeah. And he's learning. I think eventually, you, know, you give him another couple of years and he, he, he'll be hard to beat. I think he, because he's learning and he's very open. He's very open about that. Yeah. Um, and he seems to be open too about what he needs to do as a fighter and how he needs to learn and what he needs to gain, you know, a, a gain and, and, and add to his arsenal. So we, we might be looking at, at a, one of the, you know, uh, he's, not, he's not there yet in some of the names in history that, we've, uh, that we can throw around. Yeah, yeah, I think he's a Lennox Lewis at this stage and, mm -hmm. and so forth, another great British heavyweight, but I, 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 he could be, you know, he could be, he's definitely, he's definitely got the power and he seems to have a, a boxing intellect, he seems to be doing things in there for, for reasons, Yeah, he yeah. knows what he's doing and why. Yeah, um, Yeah. A, f a fight with him and Deontay Wilder, it's a good fight. I think, I think the, the more technical boxer is Anthony, yeah. but with Wilder you just can't, you, you know, you just can't ignore that that pop that he has and that power and that leverage he gets on his punches. It's a good fight. Do you Never think? Happened. Yeah. Do you think Parker had to be that sort of awkward, like sort of like Deontay, just sort of risk it maybe, risk it a little more? Yeah, yeah. You have to. You yeah. Have to. You go. Yeah. That's yeah. As Dylan White said, he didn't take enough chances. Yeah. Uh, you have no you know, risk versus reward. You got to take it when you when all those belts are on the line. You got to you got to take some risks, uh, calculated risks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Joe was quite even. I was a little surprised. Even say round ten, uh, it was quite obvious for me. You know, if in the corner, it's quite obvious you're down on the scorecards. Mm -hmm. But there still wasn't that sense of urgency. I was waiting for the. I was waiting for a charge in the corner. Joe says, "You're down. Come on. You got to really. You got to get on this guy. And you got to hurt him. You got to yeah. tip him over if you want. You know, I didn't see that. And even in the last round, Joseph once again was on the back foot. Yeah. Just being nice and cautious. Like uh, I don't know. Those a few things like that. I, I was surprised at. I was thinking, you got it's a time for the kitchen sink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's round twelve and you're down. It's well, even at the tenth round. That's when you start. You got to start making that move. I mean, if you close the deal on those three rounds, who knows where the fight could have uh, could have been? But maybe who knows? I mean, when I'm in there, Joe, Joe might have tasted some Anthony's power. I mean, you know, he's a strong man. That might have uh, that just might have hindered him a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? Because he did, he did. Anthony did catch him with some good shots. 
But he did look like a threat though, right? Like he, he, he just, I mean, he didn't execute, but he did look like he belonged in that ring. Oh right? yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he had the right to be there and he, yeah. and he absolutely showed that he, 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 he should have been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he gave it a good go. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I guess, uh, you know, what does Parker need to do to get back to the top level and recapture a portion of the heavyweight crown? Uh, what is that, you know? Is it a, does he need to change something? Does he need to... Change trainers. Well, you know, that's been said. That's yeah. been said a lot that he needs to. Uh, he, well, he needs at least he needs some injection. Yeah. Because you know, say the last five fights, as the opponents have been at that level, there's there's been these similar traits that he needs something in there. I'm not sure what it is. You know, maybe there's a new injection. Um, but he's he's made it clear he's keeping the whole team. He's staying what he's doing. So I think the most important thing is is don't go back and fight just somebody down here from across the channel or something for. Tasman you mean like Lucas money. Brown? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't see the yeah. point of doing that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to stay current. You stay, stay in the top 10. That's yeah, yeah. what I think, personally. Stay in the top 10 and just get get current and stay more you know, relevant quicker. Okay. Uh, just talk about the winner of Hey Value. I, I don't know. I mean, uh, neither of them are ranked. I don't know. I, I, that's just my opinion. I mean, uh, it's different. I mm -hmm. think if you've got a guy like him who's still, Joseph's still in the top five with, I think, two of the WBC and WBO, I think. I think he's still there. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah, so, I mean, stay current, relative, you know, relevant. I mean, another year, you could be looking at another, next this time next year, if he stays busy, has the right fights, uh, you could be looking, you know, knocking on the door again of another shot. Because that asked Freddie Roach once. I said, what do you think of Parker? And he suggested a train, you know, a change of trainer. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, but, well, yeah. was Freddie looking for work at the time? <laughs> I don't, how do you think? I don't know. It would be, it would be interesting to see Parker train on, like, under someone like Freddie Roach. Or... Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, there's, there's you know, we've all got our opinions on that. Yeah, especially yeah, yeah. as trainers a long time, and I'm, I'm lucky enough to work with a lot of our top talent and yeah. had a couple of Olympians and amateurs, and you've been around a while, you do, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's possibly. You know, it needs to be, possibly there needs to be another injection in there of, of a, a different approach and what Joseph's got, what he's doing and, and adding on to it. Um, definitely I think you need some defensive patterns mm -hmm. tightened up there. Working using his guard a little bit more effectively, a functional guard type Lot of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people have got guards, but then there's a functional guard. Where well, you about. counter, you mean? Yeah, there's different distances yeah, yeah. where you can catch and counter and work off it and do different things. Um, yeah, yeah, just things like that. But. Um, and defensive patterns also can be with the footwork and you know how, how you enter. Mm -hmm. You've got to enter in a big manner, you've got to enter off-centre. You've got to drill, drill it and drill it and drill it. So you're entering off-centre either way, even getting that distance so you can even change your leads. Mm -hmm. Enter with that right, uh, shoot it low, come over the top. Just different, you know what I mean? You've got to keep the other opposition guessing. And when Go you're on quick on. like Joe, you, sh you should be able to just uh, imagine, imagine the, the counter-punching ability he could have mm -hmm. if he's in range. He's only just got to check that distance. It was just too long, and, and, and Anton was very clever how he stayed on the fringe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very clever. Just tagged him from the outside. Yeah, that's yeah. right, stayed on the fringe. And, yeah. um, and he read Joe, and he just taking those half steps and making just Joe short. And sometimes we're starting to dial at him too, and yeah. trying to counter. But I mean, yeah, yeah, some people, from what was promised and, and what the hype and the media built up, some people were expecting a little more, as you said. There could be a rematch, right? I mean, you know, uh, mm. Deontay, uh, you know, had a, had a rematch. Uh, with, what's his name, Bumay and Stiverne, yeah, because, yeah. because he went the distance with him. I mean, it is possible, right? I mean, I know you would like to see it again, but do you think the public has an appetite for it, or...? It depends on their path. Have they moved for, on? For a yeah. moment, they've got to go down their own path. Joe's got, I think Joe's got to show he some good fights. Yeah. And I think, like in the perfect, even the WBC look like they've, they've got him tied up, but a guy like Dillian White. Mm -hmm. Dillian he, White? He, he yeah. was local. Mm -hmm. uh, and a fight like that would be a good gauge how Anthony dispatched of him. And how the fight went, and then see how Joseph fights him. Because Dillian is like the gatekeeper to to Anthony yeah. Joshua, right? Yeah, he's a good fighter. He's yeah, a good fight. Yeah, he's a big man too. Yeah, like Deontay was supposed to fight him in order to get that fight with, uh, you know, with AJ. So yes. yeah, that's, well, that's the best avenue, right? I would. Well, I would we're talking now. Dillian White, they're giving him a shot, but Dominic Brazil has, has put his hand up and said, "Hold on, I'm the mandatory here. You can't step past me. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm promised the fight." So Dominic Brazil has, has just been. Put speaking out in the states as you know, as we speak, like you can't overlook me. I've been I was guaranteed to fight. I'm uh, you know I'm the next one in line to fight um, Wilder. Mm -hmm. But now the WBC is saying Dillian White is the next shot at Wilder. So that's kind of um, yeah, that's getting a little controversial as well. <laughs> it's like money talks, right? Yeah, money talks. 
I mean, if you if, if, if someone gets involved there, um, and they often Dillian White twice as what he could get to fight Joseph on, say, the next Joshua undercard or whatever. Yeah. That's pretty much, I mean, that's, I, I, I see that as the best avenue, right? I don't think so too. I yeah. some say Dillian's a main eventer now, it probably is, he yeah. was with Lucas. But on a show like that, I'm sure there's, if the money's right and everything, there's no, um, I mean, there's no shame yeah. in fighting underneath an Anthony Joshua as a main event. I mean, I, it's, it's an easy sell, I mean, the rematch. You could just say, you know, the first time they fought, Parker wasn't used to the, the world stage watching him. Uh, the referee, you can, you can, you, the Italian ref, Gustav, ref. he was constantly, you know, strict control with the close quarter fighting. That's right. Uh, plus, he's the only man to go the distance with AJ. Maybe he just had an off night. I mean, I, I think there's a rematch in, in I, the world. I think so. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of there's, there's a platform there to actually build from. Yeah, yeah. And, and make it happen. I think a few more fights this way, they've, they've got to go their own path. Mm -hmm. A couple more fights that way. I think, um, and Jason has some good wins. And of course, learning on the run, yeah, yeah. On, on, on the way, um, yeah, next year, who knows? I think Joshua is definitely tied up this year. Mm -hmm. Whether this, I don't know what's going on with Wilder's camp and what have you, that's a, that's a tough, dealing with Al Heyman and everything, that's a tough enough to crack, I imagine. <laughs> to get that, I mean, $50 million was offered. Yeah, and I know. Eddie Hearns, Eddie Hearns said, okay, let's see a contract, and nothing's happened. Eddie Hearns was in the States for the... Daniel Jacobs fight on the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his boy. Yeah, and Katie right. Taylor was there as well. He was there. He just wanted to get a meeting with him. They wouldn't meet with him. Jared Miller was there as well, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Shelley Finkel and, and Al Heyman, I mean, Eddie's in the States. Let's meet to talk about it. They, they didn't meet. Mm -hmm. So I think, obviously, I mean, you, you can only say it was a publicity stunt, right? That's really all you can say. Um, <laughs> I've got another question about, you know, his stable mate, uh, you know, Jeff Horn. Yep. Uh, he's going to fight Terence Crawford on yeah. June on June ninth. Next month. That's a good. Yeah. Yeah. How do you see that going? Well, Crawford. You know, we've all seen Crawford. Crawford's a talented fighter. Pound for pound, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Number one, probably. Yeah, that, that's a tough fight. That's a tough fight for Jeff. But as as we know, with Jeff, Jeff, Jeff can get up for tough fights. As he, we saw that with Manny. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jeff's tough. Yeah. I think I think with the styles here, because Jeff is, is a walk forward fighter, mm -hmm. and Terence boxes. Beautifully off the back foot. Yeah, I think that 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 style and that making there, if that's how Jeff comes, that will suit Crawford. It will suit because you know Crawford's southpaw off the back foot with very good timing. Yeah, and he yeah. move, he tags on the way in, and he's, he's off. You know, he angles off very well, controls the distance very well. Um, that's going to be an interesting fight. It's a tough one for Jeff. Very but tough. Jeff Jeff Horn is almost prepared to do whatever it takes. You know, like um, he goes in there, he mm. transforms to mm. another spirit like this guy. Mm. He, I mean, I wouldn't say dirty, but you know, he does whatever it takes, right? You know, professional boxer. You yeah. Do what you do. Yeah, and you know, the other guy's trying to kill you as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he, um, yeah, no, Jeff, Jeff was bullying Manny. Yeah, and Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, right? absolutely. That, that was the right tactic. W exactly right. Yeah. right. yeah, I mean, this is the most dangerous person in the world, right? You, you, you gotta, you gotta bully him, right? And he, he went in there and he took the belt. Like it felt like he did what he had to take. Yeah. You know, close, but yeah, you know, close. Wrapped him up. I mean, you know, I mean, Teddy Atlas's emotional outburst was a little over the top. Yeah, yeah. That was, you know, he's not working on network anymore. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> I was kind of expecting sure. Parker to use that Jeff Horn approach, like you know. Well, he had to. Yeah. The only way you're going to take that, you know, you got a unified champion. He's got three belts in his home crowd with his status and his profile. Yeah. You had to really take it off. You had to take it to him to to win. Yeah. You couldn't be cautious. You had to embody that spirit, yeah, you right? Had to, yeah, you had to. You yeah. had to. You had to. Really and he just go. didn't. No, you, you kind of just. You, yeah, he didn't, didn't take enough chances. Yeah. Had some moments, yeah, yeah. without a doubt. Showed showed that he could ruffle the feathers and get in there and mix it, but then just played it cautious again. Um, and then went back to that. You say off the back foot. It's hard to win a fight off the back foot when the bigger man and the bigger man's coming forward and controlling the ring. It's even in the judge's eyes. Even if the round is close, the man coming forward controlling it will give a nod. Uh, you know, but as you see with the comedy box, uh, box stats, mm -hmm. Joe threw a lot of shots. Yes, just wasn't landing. Just couldn't get that range yeah. sorted out. But AJ still outlanded. You know. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was more efficient yeah. in, his, in his punch output. Exactly. Yeah, which is that's it's, it's kind of a Mayweather tactic. Yeah, yeah. Floyd's very conservative. He's not a high work rate fighter, but he throws and he lands. And he returns, right? He, yeah. he counters. That's the. Yeah, Floyd's very good counter boxing. Yeah. Defensive, defensively, he's very good. Um, he's a master of defense. Just if, if Jeff Horn by some, you know, pulled it off, what, what does that make him? Is Whoa. that? That's, that's, that's a great one. 
It's a great one for Jeff. So is he automatically one of the top five in the world, or? Well, he got left in. He's got you got the Garcia's lining up. Keith Thurman just gave up a belt. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just in opinion, I mean, that's. Oh well, he'd have to he'd have to take that mental spot. He'd have to yeah. take the pound for pound spot if, if he beats uh, Crawford. The only thing some would say the Crawford's first step into welterweight. Yeah, so it's uh, a size advantage, right? So yeah. Jeff Jeff's used to fighting that guy's that size. Yeah, yeah. And Jeff seems quite, you know, good good size for yeah. Walter. Yeah. Quite strong. So yeah, he's got those factors on his side as well. But some would say they beat Terence. Oh, was, you know, that's a great one. Some would go the other way and say, well, Terence was only a junior welter and he came up and da 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 da. But I don't think so. Not not with the way Terence boxes, and how he's Terence is dispatched to his opponents and how he's won. I mean, to have Pacquiao on your record and then. You know, Terence Crawford, I mean... Yeah, he's on the way. He'll be looking at some big paydays. I think, uh, uh, you know, like the Garcia, the Den- Denny Garcia and those guys at the moment, they were, Keith Thurman gave up a belt, so who else? They talked about it, Garcia and someone else going to fight for it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Jeff can get in there and start to unify, you know, kind of thing. So that always makes it interesting. Um, so who's, how do you rate David Nikia, by the way? He, he won the gold? Yeah, he did. He, he, D- David's a great talent. Yeah. Uh, very athletic and agile, and he just lives. He lives to speak boxing. Internationally, when, he, when he's getting up to like that Olympic level, he needs these things. He, he needs to make some uh, things. He needs to add into his arsenal as well. Yeah. Uh, I thought I thought the first fight didn't go that well at Commonwealth Games. Mm-hmm. I thought the second fight was very close. Mm-hmm. Like the all five judges had the Englishman ahead after round one. Yep. And I think rightfully so. And I think around, it was close. It was close. Mm-hmm. But the final, he he just did a job on. Uh, the um, Australian David won at fair and square. Yeah. yeah, I think he's fought him before as well. Like, um, yeah, I think they have fought a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think no, they've fought three or four times. And yeah, he's won every time. Yeah, so then yeah. he probably knows him inside out. Yeah, and that particular style, well, you know, just suited David. Whereas, whereas Englishman made life a bit harder. He, he's a heavyweight, uh, David, right? Yeah, yeah, 90, uh, 91 kgs. Yeah. Do you think he could? I mean, I, I, I don't know if this is a ridiculous question, but do you think he could compete with with, with Anthony Joshua? Like, do you think he? Oh, is it? Well, at this stage, in a professional um, weight limit, David is a cruiserweight. Okay, yeah, so yeah. It, it, it's completely, he's going to get blown away yeah, yeah, by yeah, that yeah. power. David, David's a tall and rangy boy, without yeah, yeah. a doubt, but you, you will see the size and the power difference at that weight, is, whew, it's, it's very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Agility-wise and athletic-wise, David, David's a great talent. Yeah, so that's probably the next... And, but he's, yeah. um, you know, he came into, there's a lot of preparation here, because we had no coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so him and his coach had parted ways, you know, um, some time ago, and I think he's just been just doing his own thing, um, which is a shame. But it, you know, he, he got through. He's been in the WSB circuit, so he's been getting some good prep. Yeah. Uh, and what have you? But yeah, it's a shame a guy that level and he's and he's you know, doing his thing. Yeah, it's like Chris Eubank Jr. I think trained him, trained himself. I think. Mm. Yeah. So is, is that what he's doing? Yeah, I think he's trained himself. That's what he said. He said it as that he's been just doing his own thing, and I think he's locked into a gym down there now as well. In Hamilton, yeah, yeah. yeah. H, H, uh, H two, yeah, George uh, Cairo George. He's Cairo yeah. George's gym. I yeah, think yeah. David's training in there and doing his thing, but yeah. he definitely needs a you know an older pair of eyes and a head helping yeah. him and yeah. developing that him. That guidance and, and that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But hey, he, he got a second Commonwealth Games medal, so uh, he, he's away. But to get to that next level, like at that Olympic level, where he hasn't ha- hasn't just just pushed through and got there. He needs to make some additions, without a doubt. Some things that the, the way those Europeans fight and the way they like to score, um, just a few things to add in there. But that's, hey, every fighter's on a, a progress, a work in progress. But he's a great talent, his agility, his dedication, and even his you know demeanor. He's good for the sport. Yeah. He's um, got New Zealand another gold in boxing. That's two, that's two back-to-back Commonwealth games. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's kind of put himself in the history books there as well. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's fantastic. So, you know, he's probably the next... All at 22 years of age. Yeah. Um, uh, hopefully he turns pro now, I, I'm not sure. At that age, I don't know, maybe, maybe stick around for the Olympics. Yeah. At his age, yeah, when, yeah. when is it, 2020? Yeah. So it's two years, I mean, he'll only be a young man still. Yeah, exactly. 24, yeah. 25, probably have a crack at the Olympics and then look, look at what where, where he's got. Because how well he does it that... Uh, Olympic campaign mm-hmm. can dictate how he gets on as a professional. What offers it. it might get, what where, where it might go from there. You know Stop, I mean? you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's market value. Exactly. Yeah. And that's just how it works. Fantastic. Well, Chris, I think we've covered that covered it pretty extensively. Awesome. So thank you very much for uh, taking the time, and you know, hopefully we get to review some some more fights in Absolutely. the future.
Um, you know, the people seem to love you out there, so thank you very much for coming out here and uh, appreciate your, uh, you know, your thoughts and opinions. Well, I've, we were all behind, a lot of us here in New Zealand are all behind the Glad Rap channel because you, you, you put in boxing out there and you're covering stories and fighters and things, even at the grassroots level, <coughs> excuse yeah. me, which just doesn't get a lot of publicity. So, actually, this way we're supporting you and getting right behind you. Oh, thank you, Chris. Watch the Glad Rap channel if you want anything about local boxing, man. Boom. You heard it from Chris Martin. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it.